So, Maybe too soon to speak. We'll see. Yeah, that's yeah. Main event. Who knows? Things things can always happen. But anyway, so we've got the the draft in front of us here. So uh, making our way into this very first game of the day, we've got C Deck up against Vici Gaming Potential. Vici Gaming Potential going to be over on the Radiant. C Deck on the Dire. They've got first pick here, and, and we're going to start off with something a little bit unusual. I was it's actually a, a Winter Wyvern. This is that's not really a first band that you see commonly. I haven't yeah. seen it in in a long time, uh, or ever, actually. I, I think so we'll VGP see. are 4 and 0 with this hero. Yeah. So I think it's... It, this is not something, Yeah, this is not something that you're going to be seeing over the course of the entire China qualifier, necessarily. I think it's really uh, VGP's success with the hero. What, what yeah. do you think about Winter Wyvern in general? I know some people were worried when she first got added, but she was added with a bunch of nerfs. Yeah, she was well. added with a bunch of nerfs and she had really, you know, mediocre results in general at uh, different in-house leagues, like FPL, and yeah. in pro games she was not used a lot uh, to any good extent. So in FPL it was just negative win rate on the hero in general, but I think that comes down a little bit to players not playing the hero correctly because it is a very specific hero in level choices what mm -hmm. skills will you go for how will you play your early game will you roam towards mid will you try and farm up a little bit like it matters a lot exactly what you do some other support heroes have more freedom they can do like a little bit whatever they want yeah. I think you have to be an expert on winter wyvern for him to be really that you know worthy of a first pick for sure so um, that's good. Getting a targeted ban out of C deck, though, and uh, we see, of course, Shaker and SF being banned out along with Queen. These doesn't really strike you as surprising at all, though. I would say no. these are the, standard These bans. are definitely very. I, I think a lot of this is just due to the fact that, well, okay, we were seeing bans on Spirit Breaker, we were seeing bans on Undying and whatnot, so but those heroes have kind of been tweaked here and there, and Chatafine, Queen of Pain, Earthshaker, still exactly where they were, and still just rock-solid picks. Yeah. Really. You, you open the draft with any of those three heroes, and I, I guess Queen of Pain's a little bit vulnerable to, say, an immediate Lion pick, or if yeah. the Earthshaker is still in the pool, but a lot of teams still value the hero highly enough that uh, you, you She's still really strong. Like, if you get an early Orchid, you're as much of a counter to them as they are to you. Yeah. So, like, yeah, it's a really strong hero. No surprise at all seeing Undying being first picked here. Despite his nerfs, still goes with the theme of the patch. So this puts already Vici Gaming in the spot. Undying, he only really gets strong if he can get kills consistently in the game. If he doesn't have a full action-packed game, if the game slows down a little bit, a little bit more split push and so on, he has no real place. Yeah, he, he doesn't farm fast, he doesn't do anything. And even if he doesn't, it, it feels to me now, especially after the changes, if we're getting to the point where it's kind of, if Undying isn't winning his lane, then I feel like you're, you're in trouble. You know, similar yeah. to, say, um, talk about Viper or Razor or OD. Yeah. You're picking these kind of heroes because you want bomb, to though. dominate some kind of matchup, and if you're not getting that aspect out, then Undying can fall off. Oh, he uh, definitely does. Quickly. I mean, you pick the hero with the intention of winning a lane that you would not expect to win, like going to an enemy safe lane and crushing that, and then having something strong on your safe lane yourself. Um, that's why a lot of teams in the previous patches were playing like Undying and Queen of Pain together, like yeah. two of the most aggressive lane winners, and just put them on the same lane. They could beat tri lane so easily. And uh, Rubik, gotta be the pickup here, along with Dragonite. I like the Rubik pick against Undying, because you can easily go for boots first on Rubik if you want to, and that way he's not really feed for Undying at any point. Yep. And he just works really well with the DK for ganks if you want to gank mid lane. Oh, <laughs> Dragon Knight, you're going to be a sad buddy. Yeah. Okay, so C-Deck definitely playing that, well, at least drafting thus far, the slightly more lane-oriented approach that we were we were talking about. We've got the Undying so far, Viper probably looking for that matchup against the Dragon Knight. Fortunately for Dragon Knight, he's got the spam with Breathe Fire. Viper doesn't cope all that amazingly well against people who can just spam the wave, so... I mean, it was a DK's much, still gonna get his farm. Yeah, it was a much worse lineup recently for DK. Now he has the minus damage uh, he has the damage yep. reduction on his Q, so he can actually last it pretty decently against Viper on the first creep wave, but he's not gonna sustain through the right, uh, right clicks of Viper, since Viper has his orb attack and doesn't even need to pull the creeps. It does become really bothersome for DK. Um, so he should be losing his lane, but he shouldn't necessarily be struggling that much.
Yeah, and I mean it's the it's the same old story with Dragonite. Right? Your goal is to hold down your lane, Thanks get the CS that you can, and then either rotate to go and take a tower, or hope that the opposing mid laner rotates yeah. and that you can take his tower. And I like it's I like almost the guaranteed Viper, gold. Yeah, I like the Viper pick because of that though, because Dragonite, as you said, relies a little bit on the enemy mid laner rotating, and but then Viper, you take the tower. But Viper, yeah. he can just sit there. He's like, "What you gonna do, bro? I'm just gonna I'm farm. just gonna farm. Yeah, just gonna farm right here. This is my spot." You know, so he's he's perfectly he's perfectly fine just being there, and uh, yeah, we'll see. This they denied a good combination here. Uh, Cedic did by banning out the gyrocopter because gyro and rubik together is a very brutal combo. If you want to play them as supports, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. If you want to have gyro as a carry, then rubik is still a very good hero, at just grabbing someone and throwing them close to him. Yeah, so and I like this ban out. Yeah, I think Gyrocopter in general, even after the nerfs, is still very scary. And I think one of the scariest things is what he lets you get away with. He's so strong in the lane. He's so strong at, at dealing with off laners. And that, the flying tombstone. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, the, and the flat cannon and the, the zombies and whatnot. But it, it almost opens you up to either have a roaming support or a jungler or really whatever you you know whatever you're aiming for in terms of being a little bit more greedy just because of the uh, gyrocopter's landing so prowess so i think that, uh, that that's definitely something that cedar are but somewhat looking that's at here when so they good. they go for that ban uh, meanwhile looking over at vgp we've got disruptor who's been having a Pretty big rise um, among sort of these tier two Chinese teams. I think in the scene in general as well, Disruptor's starting to get a little bit more respect. We're starting to see some more picks. I think people are just playing him better in he, general as yeah. well, and we're seeing that unlocked potential. He is really, really strong. He was used a lot in the European uh, scene as well, as mentioned. And uh, I think he's a, he's a dangerous hero in general because he can always find, the, uh, find those kills for you. You think that you can disengage, but if you have anyone in your team with a 4-staff, or if you get a 4-staff or a blink on your disruptor, like you're, you're just not running away straight up from it. I find it very curious that VG Gaming decided to ban out the Phoenix and then instantly grab up the Skywrath themselves. This kind of tells yeah. how much they're scared of lane domination here. So they really, really don't want to go against Undying Phoenix lane. Which I can understand. It's extremely strong, but like Sky is a hard, hard counter against Phoenix. So uh, you would be pretty fine with them playing it, I would expect, but they're not going to have any of it. Yeah, so T Deck just end up fishing for a little bit more information, going for the Witch Doctor. It looks like they're going to be playing this pretty early, pretty aggressive. I mean, that's just what we've been seeing in general from this version, so I don't think that should come as too much of a surprise. And then Vichy Gaming Potential do end up grabbing. A bristleback, so we can fight early. But this is already starting to look like a a, a somewhat difficult game, I think, for the the bristle. You're up against the viper oh, strike. Yeah. Uh, we've seen witch doctor being picked for the last couple of months as an painful. answer to bristleback, just because the yeah you can get really good value out of the maledict. So and could be even tough. just even just undying against bristleback is very strong now because you don't kill the tombstone zombies, and mm -hmm. then you also have the fact that if you have run close to undying, his percentage on the ulti increasing the damage towards bristleback is terrifying. You can't really dive as much as you expect on uh, on bristleback. Speaking of dives, do see spear pricker being picked up here. Good hero against skywrath and rubik supports, I think. So just another aggressive uh, notion here. See, they're definitely looking to be the aggressors in their entire draft. Yeah, Curious they to see their last heroes. Uh, I, I do feel like they're putting themselves on a little bit of a clock here. I guess it depends on what position the Undying is kind of being played in. Uh, I, I get I'm, I get the feeling that it's probably just the four here, and we might still be looking for well, I mean, aggressive hero, but uh, I'm not 100 percent sure. What do you What do you think, Waga? A slight timing, I would say, but I think they are fine depending on their last pick. If they got the last pick, Lesh Rack, which was denied by Vici Gaming potential, I think they would be on a bit more of a timing, but a strong one at that because mm -hmm. Lesh Rack is just the hero that snowballs so hard, and along with a Tombstone and Lesh Rack pushing in, you can maybe break towers really easily. So we'll see what VG Gaming decide to go for here, but I think uh, right now, as it looks, between these four heroes each, of course, VG Gaming have a little bit better, better uh, late game and runs. Yeah, the the one concern that I do have a little bit for Cedek as well, and especially with the Shrek being removed, is that their tower damage is a little bit lacking. So. Unless they're winning team they fights, the yeah, they have the sustain definitely with the witch doctor and the and the soul rip, which I think is probably a little bit. You know, everyone talks about the the tombstone and the decay for the undying, but soul rip is pretty crazy ability as oh, yeah. well. But 
they do have to win the team fights somewhat one-sidedly to actually be able to push into towers and take tier twos. I think tier ones probably shouldn't be too much of a problem. I mean, they can pick up a mech on their Viper uh, and get going that way. Yeah. We do see I a little bit more mech bristle in, in China, so I think BGP might have pretty, one of uh, They could be pretty punished, though, in terms of the tier runs and the trades. I think that VG Gaming potential, despite their supports not really doing much, they have Dragonite and Bristleback, now a Broodmother. Ooh. So, speaking of punish, if you go for a tower push and you try Raid, VG Gaming is going to push really hard here. So, uh, see that they need to force the fights and get them. The Spirit Breaker is good to have against the Broodmother to begin with here, though. So, they have a little bit of a counter, but Undying doesn't really do that much against the Brood. Tombstone is nice against the Spiderlings. It kind of clears them off, but that's about it. It also gives good, um, good soul rips. But against Broodmother, if you don't have enough good stuns early on, she can take over a game. And Witch Doctor stun is not great. Spirit Breaker stun is also not great early on. So whatever their last pick is now has to be something that deals fairly well with the Broodmother. They could go a Legion, honestly. Yeah, it's not very popular, but oh, okay. it is good against uh, Bristleback and the Broodmother. But they go for fake oh, so, Legion. So is, so is Axe. Yeah. So there you go. So they're going to get the... The call for repositioning Bristleback and being able to punch him in the face. Yeah. They get a little bit of an answer to the Broodmother as well. I feel like Vichy Gaming Potential's lanes are pretty easy to read at, at this stage. Yeah, uh, but what, what, do you, what do you feel for C-Deck? Are they still going to try and run something aggressive, take some advantage of the Undying that way, or maybe just going to see like Undying act? I think we're, Duel, what's, what's I think going we're on? going to dual lanes from C deck. They need to focus pretty heavily on movement. They can't really play this statically and just try to like, okay, we're going to sit in our safe lane, you can take your safe lane, and then we trade off. I think that's going to be their downfall if they go for that. So any aggressive lane with uh, Undying Ten is going to be fine. If they want to have... Uh, yeah, they need to have Undying against, against the Bristleback, Remain. pretty much. So they can pair up the Axe against the And now... Well, it kind of comes down to both teams know what the other one wants to do, and then they can mind game each other like back and forth. But they're, they're probably going to scout. Yeah, they're probably going to scout early. Yeah. So here we are, guys, getting ourselves underway with this first game of the two-game series between Vici Gaming Potential and Cedek. Yeah, got LP key stats in here as well with us. So let's get away with introductions. Uh, no much further ado. We've got over on VGP. We've got James. On Rubik, we've got XLL on the Bristleback. Dogfights is going to be on Skywrath Mage. We've got Lin on the Dragon Knight. And finally, Yang is going to be over on the Broodmother. Yeah, that's cool. And of course, we see quite a few of C Deck walking down here to bottom lane. We have Shiki playing the Viper, Garter playing the Undying, XZ playing Spirit Breaker, and uh, Q is playing the Witch Doctor. Meanwhile, in their own jungle, we have Aggressive. He doesn't care, he's alone, he'll be fine. So it seems that C deck kind of read them well here, since they bring down everyone. They got an early ward here as well, so might look for a kill. Yeah, have a little bit of There's scouting really good vision though. This movement by VGP, they they see every possible move that C deck could go in with here, so I think they're fine. Yeah, and, and the initiation for C deck is not that impressive for this level one. Kind of have to get a cast or yeah, a charge going in, and looks like not much going to be happening. Top lane. Battle for the Banter, a couple of hits being traded back and forth. No contest for bot whatsoever. Looks like C-Deck with four heroes down there are going to get it. And well, with Dragonite rotating over as well, looks like both mid players are going to end up grabbing their Banter runes. Yeah, that's why the Axe going. had to man down there against the Brood. Else he would be fine just standing there, but as the Dragonite rotates in, you don't really want to risk it. Don't want to give away accidental first blood in a game like this. No point. Yeah, and Axe doesn't have a ton of regen either, just a single pack of Tangos at yeah, the moment. Yeah, but he has so. really good base regen. Like, he's seeing yeah. a 3.8 base regen, the best in the entire game, if you don't count something like uh, having the Dragon Blood, like, cheating yeah. cheating by having skills. So, uh, him and, I guess, Nyx are the two highest really good regen games. So, bottom is going to be a fairly aggressive lane here by uh, C Deck. They are doing... You know, what we expected, just a dual lane with the uh, Undying. And that frees up more movement for Witch Doctor, but I'm not sure how much he can do, though. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, at the moment, Q's looping around oh, wow. on mid lane. Lin is a long way up at the moment, oh, realizing what's going on, trying to run back, but Q pops out and might okay. just be I take it back. Yeah, okay. He can do stuff. He's good. Here we go. He got it. Nice first blood. Wow. That was playing really far out by the, uh, the DK. He needs to pull the creep wave against the Viper or he's going to get punished like that. 
if you want to see us against the Viper, you really need to pull the creep waves to your side of the river. Yeah, do some aggro tricks. The other, I guess the other really dangerous thing for the Dragonite here is the the vision situation. The Radiant have chosen to use one ward down bot, which I think is fair enough. They thought it was going to be an aggressive tri lane, or at the very least an aggressive dual lane. Uh, and they've actually used the other one all the way over at the top side of the map. So they've got no rune vision at the moment, and mid lane is yeah. really naked at the moment. Well, a bit tough for Lin in general, I think. No rune vision, but however, they do see top and bottom. And when you know that the enemy Witch Doctor is not bottom, <laughs> he's not top, yeah. well, then he has to be going for you. So uh, CS wise, C deck are going to be in a good lead here since DK died once. And bottom lane, they are farming a little bit on the Spirit Breaker. Seems they want to get the farm onto him and not caring as much for down dying. But he's still chipping in, kind of splitting. Yeah, XE is, is typically their three position player. So yeah. uh, I think it makes sense that he's getting a little bit of extra farm here. James looking for the cliff. Can he oh, get he Q over? It. Nice. Does manage to put him up there. Yeah. And he's going to be stuck there for a little while. They've got vision as well from this ward, so... He should just buy a TP straight yeah. away. He's holding on because he might feel that he needs to upgrade the courier. But, uh, yeah, he should just buy a TP. You don't need an upgrade on the courier to deliver a TP to the, that spot, so... You're fine. Or no matter what spot you're on, you can always deliver it. As long as it's your TP. I've seen so many pl uh, players get stuck, and then they're like, Support, buy me a TP scroll. And then the walking courier can't give it to you, because you need to actually have your own TP. Yeah, and you see people trying to drag TPs into people's inventories oh, up yeah. the cliffs as well. Yeah, that, All that, kinds of that, that also doesn't work. It never but. works. It could maybe end up with the TP being somewhere where you can't reach it though, which is really hilarious when it happens. Yeah. But yeah, so far top lane Axe is doing really well. He gets a good call here onto the spiders. He's just keeping any control down for, uh, for Yang. 20 CS already. A lot of them are spiders, but... That's still a good farm. Yeah. The really nice thing for the C deck tri lane as well is that there isn't something like a Nature's Prophet or a Puck or somebody who's going to get level six top lane and then come down and disrupt their situation. Oh, yeah. Broodmother is not going to rotate and gank. Oh, they want to um, go here on bottom lane. They're uh, running out on coming James. In. James in some trouble. He's still got the lift, throws it out, silence under the undying, opens up a little bit more space as well, but the tombstone comes out. And one last auto attack is going to be that kill. Bristleback. Gets involved with a couple of cool sprays, but that's all he can really do, and yeah. that's Cedek claiming their second kill of the game here. That two points into the Charge of Darkness. He actually charged so fast that the Rubik couldn't uh, turn around and lift him. I mean, Rubik has an instant cast on his disable, so whenever you see that the Spirit Breaker is going on you, you should be fine. But he kind of went through the uh, through the tree line and just got him. So, very good play there by the uh, Spirit Breaker, finding an opportunity. Yeah, meanwhile, 4-Minute Rune's popping up. Looks like oh, Dragon nice. Knight's going to go for top. Regen Rune Very nice spawning for down line. bottom. And Guard is going to be able to hold on to his Magic Stick charges with that as well, so he's going to be pretty happy with that. Yeah, well, he could turn pretty scary with that, and uh, Spirit Break has even more of them. He has 8 charges. That's just what happens when you're laying against the Scarrath and Bristleback. It's like, yep, we get, get the Magic Wand. However, the Bristleback has 7 of his own, and he even has an upgraded, upgraded stick. Yeah, that, that new wand is just so value you get. Oh, it's great. Lots of stats, it's cheaper. A lot of people go for it on the mid lane in spammy lanes against <laughs> something like a storm where you know he's going to use a lot of spells. Because uh, it's just a cost effective item, it's really strong. <laughs> Top lane. I like how Yang is just farming with his brood, uh, broodlings. This is just knew. lone druid style. Yeah, he knew that the, the axe had no mana to use his call. He does have a magic wand though, so if he really wants to commit, this is a lot of spiders. He can go for it now. Oh, very close. Yeah. Nice little bit of micro from Yen. Just you want that gold under control. Yeah, a, a good chief is definitely very keen to get the gold. One thing that he could be doing is uh, using a couple little aggro tricks to pull the creeps onto him, and then maybe try and spin the spiders even while they're in viz. They're but, so fast though. But yeah, they, they just move away so quickly. And That's what it comes down to. They just run just away in immediately. And Broodmother, this lane is not a good matchup for her, but she's probably going to focus more on taking over the jungle soon. So uh, a little bit interesting that he did skill his ulti on this lane. I would just max out the web and take over the enemy jungle, because fighting against the Axe is just not favorable for... Uh, uh, got another go bottom lane, another charge coming in, Bash as well onto James, he's not going to be able to do anything. And the Tombstone zones off the rest of VGP, poor Rubik tanks, another death, and yeah. Cedek going to take their third kill. Wow, that's, uh, that's harsh, you can't really be giving away too much on a lane like that. If you have Spirit Breaker and a lying against you, that's, that's really dangerous. And Q has been playing really well this game. I said that it might be hard for him in this game to rotate and get something out of it, but he has been in every single kill so far, and just been at the right place at the right time.
No, just kind of meandering his way around the map and, and getting things done there. We do see Yang, like you were saying, starting to make a little bit of use of the dire jungle here. Investing. <laughs> yeah, just being a nuisance. That's kind of Broodmother's role in life, right? Yeah. Uh, what kind of build are you hoping to see out of the Broodmother here? How greedy can you go? How team-oriented do you need to be if you're Yang? How? Uh, I'm pretty happy to see a very greedy brute. I think it's good. Like, you can get away with Midas even if you want to. He's being charged now from bottom lane. Uh, we might see an attempt here, but... Yeah, there is a dust on XZ, so... Yeah, he doesn't have ulti, though, but it's pretty long stun duration on his Q, because he's enough, it. Yeah, there's seconds. enough mana yeah. for the Berserker's call as well. They come in, they get the dust, they get the call, a couple of creeps getting involved here wow. as well, throws out the nuke, and in comes the dunk. The Tormentor is like, yeah, is that a kill I can help you with, sir? Of course. I'm I'm down. The, there's some action. Okay, yep. I've just been sitting here this whole time. Surprised they didn't get the last hit. They're always amazing at that, so. Yeah. But a uh, very curious skill build on the spare break. This is way different from what you would typically see in the uh, European Dola. Like, maxing out the Q, not skilling W at all, and uh, secondly, maxing out Greater Bash is. As opposed to the one level Q, one level W, and then maxing Bash, which is more popular in the European scene. I think this is needed, though. If you want to go for Broodmother kills, you need a longer stun on your Q when you charge in. And being faster makes a difference as well. Yeah, and th their lockdown in general isn't all that amazing in terms of solid stuns. I mean, cask bounce can be a little bit unreliable. Call's good, but you have to get into position, though Aggressive has a sub eight minute blink dagger here, so positioning shouldn't be too much of a problem for him I mean, in general. That's pretty common when you lane against a Broodmother that you will get so much. He did mm -hmm. a good job at just finding a lot of the spidlings, but 64 CS against a Brood at eight minutes is not unheard of. So now we'll see if he can land a good gank should probably try for bottom lane and get a high value kill on the Bristleback. You could get that one. Uh, or you can just try once more to kill the uh, Broodmother with the Spirit Breaker. Yeah, so it looks like Bristol just going to be going for a mech build up here. So VGP just kind of getting their early game items going to try and get things done. Uh, XZ is taking over farm on top lane. And so see that pretty good allocation there, just making sure that they're still getting he just needed as much six. as they can out of the map. Yeah, he just needed six mainly, and since he has it now, he's going to be fine. Uh, we'll see what Axe decides to do, because he can't really leave the Spirit Breaker for too long up here on top. The Broodmother is going to destroy him if uh, that's going to yeah. be a fair one-on-one. -on -one. We'll see. Uh, going back to that earlier question, so what, what are you thinking Broodmother build-wise here? We see a Glove of Haste so far, so it looks like it might just be Midas. Oh yeah, he's starting Yang, off with after Midas. that is his Necrobook on the table oh, here, is his Dagon kind of build. He just lost like 20 spiders or something. Yeah, it was, it was, was like painful. 64 CS up to 87, so uh, that was that was a lot of spiders. Yeah, he was at 69 after clearing a uh, small camp, but yeah, that was, that was painful to watch. Um, uh, but I think he's gonna go. Coming bottom. Are they gonna go for this one? It's only the Undying in the lane, but they're looking for the Scarab Page. Another strike coming in. Dogfight's in a lot of trouble. Bash won't even be needed. Just no. a couple more slaps and down he goes. Bristleback once again just forced to run back to his tower. Can't help Spirit his is, at all. Spirit Breaker is amazing against Sky Wrath. Sky can't do anything. It doesn't even matter if you silence the Spirit Breaker, because he can just keep running after you and he will at some point get you. Oh, he'll he's get the faster. bash. He'll, yeah, he'll he's faster. In ten, in twelve seconds, he will have his uh, Q once, once more, and yeah, you you can't really run away from it, no matter how fast Skyrath is. But I think he's probably gonna go very greedy. But then it comes down to, do you want to go for Necrobook? I don't think it's that great in this game. Uh, do you want to go for Dagon, which could be okay, but again, really tanky heroes on C deck. So maybe we'll just go for something a little bit more right-clicky, like something that you can actually kill mm -hmm. the tanky enemy heroes by staying on them. So you can go into the Yasha, like Yasha, Orchid, Basher, or anything along this line. We'll see what he opts to go for there. I think Broodmother has a lot of uh, room for optimization. Oh, good ward here, but it does not catch out the smoke movement, though. Yeah, this is big for VGP. If they can pick up a kill, might be able to translate it into a tower as well. They've got the level 6, level 7. They're on a clock. The like they have to go quickly out of this smoke because it's going to be very obvious very soon. So yeah. let's see if aggressive is going to smell uh, it. They do throw in the nuke, keeping that blink dagger on cooldown, but no disables coming out, and oh, that's going to be... The charge is happening. c Deck is like, yeah, let's go. You want to fight? We'll come. Uh, they even uh, smoked up the spirit break and charged it. Xyz eager, comes running in, but he does get Dragon Tail, still pretty tanky. Shiki's here to help him out as well. Silence onto your Viper, another strike coming in, and the blink as well from the Axe. Aggressive 
drops the dunk. Now they've got the move speed, able to keep on kiting backwards. And C Deck just staying grouped up as a team right now. Now not really careful on the witch doctor. Another charge, that's a hit 10 second cooldown. XC comes in once again, aggressive joining him as well. James in some trouble, he gets called, as does XLL. The tombstone gets dropped. Call. And that is gonna be a triple kill for aggressive. Uh, four kills going the way for VGP. Aggressive got a really good double man call there and just came out of nowhere. So, really nice. And again, Broodmother in team fights is not that great. This had to be a smoke and pick for VGP. They didn't want to have a full five on five. What is, what is the courier? After you died with four heroes, you can't have the courier die as well. Someone has to have their eyes on the game. So I, I haven't, I've looked at, I've glanced at the graphs once thus far, but I'm a little bit afraid to look at them now. We've already oh got God. a 10k lead net worth wise, 10 minute, uh, 12 minutes into this game ah, in is... C-Deck's favor and about a 7.5k That's pretty disturbing as well. That is just crazy. Like just, just looking at the net worth uh, chart, it just, Kind of shows you, you know, like oh, yes, okay. you have the top three on your team, but this undying has undying, a guard. Uh, yeah, exactly. Undying. I saw it so briefly. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Anyone else? Not nope. Lin's wow. already away. Urn I mean, taking he got down. Him. He got him. There's no way he lives. So mm. it's nice. Oh, yeah. Second Urn charge comes in, and, and yeah. there you go. Well, this is pretty much the biggest disaster you could imagine going into your first game, and just you know, 11 and 0 all. Dire structures are fortified. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Wanted. A lot of these uh, situations. Radiant structures. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. Bottom tower is under attack. And Tidak, meanwhile, Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Thank you already.
Ravian's top tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Self earn here by XC as he's uh Radiant's middle tower has fallen. Dyer's top tower is under attack. But 5.6k. Go for me. Pushed like a beast. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. Radiant's bottom deck is under attack. 